All right, now I don't mean to be skeptical two segments in a row here, VJ, but I tried to do this power wall thing and it was expensive and it didn't quite work. And this was maybe a couple of years ago, so maybe things have changed, do tell. Yeah, no, I think um, Tesla is definitely the biggest market share uh, in the US and globally. And so they tend to take the, uh, take the bigger hit on, in terms of criticism on EVs. But I would say, you know, when you look at the competition, they are doing, uh, Tesla is doing very well. They obviously have the best margin profile, gross margin profile there. Almost every other EV OEM is running at a loss. Um, they have a pretty good 20, 25% gross margin profile on the electric electrification side. Um, they're throwing off almost 10 billion in free cash flow a year. Very solid balance sheet with the 25 billion in hand. Uh, but obviously the stock has gotten hit because there's a lot of consumer exposure there. I think the consumers are stretched. Interest rates are very high. Yeah. Uh, financial rates are very high. Affordability is very low. So I think those are uh, big challenges for them in the near term for sure. So there'll be a drag here on Tesla going into earnings, especially because December quarter, you know, they had some price cuts, you know, mm -hmm. things are a little slow. They had to shut down Shanghai, et cetera. So. Would you say, Tim, that the big question is, is obviously going to be profit margins and the extent to which they're, you know, taking a cut maybe now to try to elbow out the competition as capital becomes more scarce and costly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, We've seen sorry, them. Tim, go ahead. Yeah, we've seen them in the last uh, few weeks pull that lever to try to generate more demand. I mean, a kind of concern among consumers about the recession, potential for recession, those sorts of things. But I think investors want to know at what cost, right? There's this balance between Tesla being a growth stock story going in the for forward uh, and seeing a remarkable growth or, you know, what what's it going to really cost the company and, and margins really going to be hit? Right. Tim, you know, we also have this news of, from uh, Dow Jones of the Wall Street Journal that Musk is now trying to raise $3 billion or so to try to pay off this Twitter debt. Now, these companies aren't related, except they are through his presence, obviously. So is there any significance for us to think through here in terms of his need to do uh, a Twitter kind of uh, fundraise, the ripple effect back on Tesla in terms of if, I, I don't know if it, there would need to be more stock sales or what's left in terms of that at this point. How much more risk is there in the stock from that point of view, do you think? Absolutely. I think investors will feel relief when they see Twitter uh, start to stabilize because there's this concern in the back of many's minds that uh, Elon's go-to uh, technique in the past to raise cash has been to sell Tesla shares to borrow against uh, his stock in SpaceX and in Tesla. And so if he can kind of alleviate those concerns and kind of de decouple the risk seen between Tesla and Twitter, that's probably going to be a win for investors, uh, you know, looking forward to the next year or so. And even as I'm reporting this, VJ, he is tweeting no <laughs> to this report about exploring raising up to $3 billion, which should be bearish for Tesla then. Let's show the charts. I mean, if he says he's not going to do it this way, then how is he going to get the cash? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, when you look at Tesla, obviously, uh, the last six months saw a perfect storm with uh, you know, interest rates going up, consumers being in a bad position, uh, Shanghai shutdowns, and then the whole Twitter overhang, right? So I think um, as you look forward from here, um, you know, if we start to put a peak on rates as you go into mid-2023, uh, mid production starts to ramp up. And obviously, the price cuts, as Tim mentioned, uh, uh, might have helped them gain some share here into the first quarter as they brought down their inventories. I think all that positions Tesla as a stock, um, as an investment um, fairly well, uh, given that you know you probably saw some of the worst uh, of headlines in the last six months in terms of uh, COVID shutdowns, uh, interest rates, and uh, Twitter, et cetera. So we, we think you know things probably start to improve as you go through, especially in the back half of the year. So.